Welcome back uh, again for another edition of the Advantage Line, uh, your one-stop shop podcast for all things rugby league. Uh, and we're in uh, season preview episode number three. I'm joined once again uh, by Carl Tiley to my right. Carl? Kia ora. Uh, yeah, you almost lost your seat last week, Paul. <laughs> Ask Blake. You obviously didn't listen to the episode. I didn't. No. Well, well there we go. That, that's exactly why you're going to lose your seat. The, the, the state I was in there, I couldn't <laughs> listen to much, to be fair. <laughs> Crikey. <laughs> Uh, and as you said, we're joined by Blake as well, uh, all the way from Papamore. Blake, how are you? Good, buddy. Good. Hey, you are right, Carl. And not just on the, the intro, but on a bit of the Warriors facts and a bit of other facts. I think uh, a lot of disagreement was uh, met when we read out Paul's top four facts for each team. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Who do we have? Who did we have? Last week? Yeah. We had the Warriors. We had the Sharks. Sharks, Raiders. Yeah, but who disagreed with me? We both did on the what? Warriors. On the Warriors. On the Warriors. Yeah. And you seem to have the Sharks way too high. Oh. Fifth. Mm. Watch it. Huge <laughs> movers. Could Huge. See, you could see fifth if they stay healthy, but it's the NRL. No one stays also, healthy. Also, you did miss out on um, Carl's brackets. They're, they're getting very thin. No. So, um, look, oh, look, hey. I'm smart. I wrote it down today, so I know where I'm at. I know how many spots I've got left to give. We're good. It all fits. It all fits, and I haven't I haven't contradicted myself or anything. These guys have finished five to eight. Unfortunately, you've got ten teams finishing five, <laughs> five to eight. Well, I did kind of bracket the Warriors uh, five to eight, and possibly one to four as well. So, oh, wow. One, well, one, one and, to eight. One and to you're eight. questioning my Sharks move up to fifth. Fair Lincoln. Oh wow. Well, we will see. We will see. Well, we've had our we've had our first week of trials. Yeah. Um, I guess if we just run through them, uh, the Sea Eagles took care of the Tigers. No real surprise there. Blake, <laughs> unfortunately, that that, that was did. like as scripted, <laughs> as scripted when you're coming up against a almost full strength manly team. But even if they weren't full strength, I don't know how. I, I think it pays in the Tigers' favour that manly were full strength. Uh, the Cowboys up against the Bunnies. Cowboys coming out on top. Um, looking pretty sharp too. I uh, can't really comment. Didn't watch that game. But, yeah, it's uh, – I, I don't know. As a player, Blake, how much do you guys take out of uh, the preseason trials? Well, let's just put like – people were texting me about the Warriors on the weekend. Um, for me, I was hoping they would, they would get beat because – over the last so many years, we do remember they've come out and won their two trials, and that's what fills everyone with so much hope, and then it doesn't lead into the season. So I think on the weekend, um, yeah, I, don't, I, I wouldn't read too much into it. There's a lot of young kids playing. I think one team had about 30 or 40 players ready to go. So, yeah, I, I'm more focused on this week, to be honest. I, I think, yeah, that, that round that we've just seen, I think you can take with a pinch of salt. Um, as you say, there are a hell of a lot of juniors running around or um, players who we, we may not see come round one uh, of the proper season proper. So, With that said, though, I thought there were a lot of big dogs playing too when you normally don't see them or hear about them playing the first couple of trials. I guess yeah. maybe is that a byproduct of there only being two trials? Yeah, I, I, think, so. I think so. And I think a lot of the players... Um, that are suspended for the first couple of rounds are somehow allowed to play these trial matches. That's so, I, yeah, I'd say like we had Reese Walsh obviously playing. He won't be there round one. I think oh, that there was a ton that were playing that mm. uh, won't, won't be available. But what was interesting for me was to see where, you know how we named our teams each week or the last couple of weeks, about where we thought players would be to sort of see where the coaches have put them or wanted to see how they go, like Chance Nickel Clockstead played most of the game in the centres for the Raiders. And Xavier Savage played majority of the game at fullback, so whether it's just to see, I think Tyrell Sloan for the Dragons played a lot on the wing. Um, there was a couple of halves combinations with the Broncos. So it was, it was good to see that. That was the exciting Chanel, thing. Chanel fullback? Yeah. I think he'll be there round one. I think yeah. so too. Yeah. yeah, we know. We read in your notes. Yeah. Oh, shit. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I'll tell you what. 
there's a southerly coming through the studio today. <laughs> Gee, it was cold down in Christchurch on Saturday afternoon at Terrace Downs, but wow, not as cold as what it's written here right now. Uh, but I guess I 100% agree with that. I think um, Nickel Klopstad will be in the centres round one for the Raiders and X-Man Savage will be at the back in the number one jersey. He's... I, I do, the way that uh, Klockstad played before he got injured, you'd think that that was that number one jersey he was wrapped up um, until he moved on. Um, but yeah, this savage kid, he just seems to have a wee bit of X factor about him, and they are a bit light in the centres. The you know, I don't think they can put Savage there. I'd prefer him at the back, and Nickel Klockstad in there. I think he could adjust. Um, he did play quite a few games on the wing for the Warriors when he was there. So it won't be too much of a movie. He does have a little bit of a feel of a sort of an outside utility back where he can be used it on the one, uh, on the wing or in the centres. So, And he started the game at halfback, didn't he? Oh, I'd missed the start of it, but quite possibly. Did he? He came out uh, because Sam Williams got COVID and couldn't yes. play. Matt Frawley was out too. And so they brought him in to the front line, into, the, into seven. And that, I've seen Ricky Stewart come out and say, we're going to have to, um, what is it, change everyone gets their own room when they travel away? Because Sam Williams had COVID, and then whoever roomed with him could have been Matt Frawley or someone Frawley, with yeah. A, yeah. a close contact. So, And also, it's good just going back on your Saviour Zavage uh, take there, Paul. It's good to have the first nickname of the year, X-Men. <laughs> <laughs> Coined here on the advantage line. Yeah. yeah, I'll get the feeling it won't stick, but no worries. Um, where else we go? Oh, the Panthers. They have a very good junior system there. But if there's anything <laughs> learnt from that, from that trial, boy, is that junior system set up and just churn, churning out top-level league players. They've got a – it looks like they've got a conveyor belt of players just ready to come off and step into uh, position – if they do uh, have a few injuries during the season, they were super impressive. Yeah. Um, what they've done there over the last oh, maybe six, seven, eight years, starting from their junior system up, it's it's phenomenal. I think Gus Gould and whoever else helped set that up, that whole system, I, <laughs> I'd love every club or most clubs to have a look at it instead of buying. I mean, obviously there's, you know, chance to buy players from different certain areas but if you can take that what they've done and implement it in your own system i mean certain clubs like i think Parramatta would thrive i think uh the warriors would thrive i it's think big time it is, yeah there's so many if they just take what they had that that sort of system and implement it in their own um and you've seen the results on the weekend geez wasn't it good they they were very very good uh where else oh a Queensland derby draw, 26 all, Titans Broncos. Yeah, um, not not the only draw of the weekend either. No, no, uh, the Knights and the Bulldogs. And Callum Ponga got a uh, a welcome back to oh. rugby league. How how yeah. good was that tackle? Mate, that's Stevie Maddo, Steve Maddo I like. Just bang, just absolutely in the ribs. Killed him, didn't he? Yeah, that's that's the thing the nightmares are made of. Textbook. For me anyway. Beautiful, beautiful. Okay, shall we move on to our, where are we, teams that finished eighth to fifth last season? Yes. A little preview. Uh, and, of course, the team that snuck into the top eight, the Gold Coast Titans. Um, you got some stats. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. 580 points for, 583 points against. They averaged 24 points a game, and they conceded 24 points a game. So, Quite a few draws in. No. No, I don't know. Just No. Uh, yeah. That's, that basically sums up eight, eighth spot, really. A zero, yeah, you just... Yeah, I, yeah I, I don't know. I still, can't, I still can't get on the side. I know a lot of people have jumped on with the Titans. I still was, didn't jump on last year. And I don't think I'm going to do it again. I think they'll finish outside the eight, personally. I just think that the depth, I mean, their starting pack's good. But I, I think the the halves, I haven't seen Brimson play half. He could be 
think he played there in the juniors. He could mm. be exceptional. Um, Sexton, you know, he looked okay at the end of last year, but if you've got Fafida, Fodawaka, Tino, Isaac Liu there this year, like they've, their forward pack's exceptional. But we sat here last week, Carl and I, and <laughs> we went through every team and every forward pack is exceptional this year. You'll go hard to find a, a forward pack that isn't good. So, um, you know, the back's okay. I just don't think they'll win games with the halves and with their team. Plus, if they're not, let's say, two and four or maybe three and four out of the first four rounds, I think it's going to be a long, long year. Because after that, round five to 11, they go Eels, Eagles, Panthers, Roosters, Sharks, Dragons. Like, they're going to find a hard time winning some of those games. I guess if we look at who they lost uh, over the off-season, um, Jay Whitbread, Mitch Rain, Sam Stone, Ash Taylor, Tyrone Peachy, Jamal Fogarty, they're probably the two biggest names that they mm -hmm. lost. Um, Anthony Don, no. Uh, but they didn't really pick up anyone of note e except maybe Liu in the in yep. the forward pack. And that's where they had their strength anyway, without Liu. Yep. Um, so I agree that when I look at a team, uh, I look at the spine first, uh, and I look at Jaden Campbell, I think, a player full of potential there, an exciting young guy. Um, sure, he could be very, very good. Then I look at the halves, and there's big question marks over uh, AJ Brimson and Sexton. I just don't know. I just don't know whether they're going to be good enough uh, behind that pack to actually convert the sort of pressure that they'll be able to impose on other teams into points. Um, and then at hooker, Aaron Clark. He's, I mean, he's not a bad hooker, but I w he wouldn't be in my top six either. So it just that's where the big question marks are for me in regards to the Titans. So yeah, yeah, I was the same. I had they've got they've got the X Factor players you need to win. The the Campbells, the Fafitas, the Tinos. And they might very well upset a few of the big dogs, the Panthers or the Storm if those guys click each week. But they're not going to do it every week. And they don't, as you say, have the halves combination uh in camp to Sort of offset those weeks where they don't click. I think the the losses of uh, Peachy, Ash Taylor, and Mitch Rain in particular are pretty big. That's a lot of games, a lot of experience. Uh, Mitch Rain has played. I heard the other day, two hundred fifty odd games, NRL games. Um, and in my opinion, I thought he was their best hooker last year. Um, Ash Taylor's obviously been his up, has had his ups and downs, but. Still very, uh, very ex uh, experienced. Same with Tyron Peachy. So they definitely haven't uh, replaced those those games and that that experience there. So yeah. I'm with you, Blake. I've got them in my uh, in my bracket, ninth to twelfth. Yeah, yeah. I had them. I had them tenth. I had them tenth. I think, like he's just summed up the the big thing with uh, coming out of the All Stars was if you use for feeder right, you it, he can do wonders for you. But it's a lot harder in the NRL than it is under 10s to just give someone the ball and let him run over someone. Like, we've seen him do it, and he would have games where he can do it. But every week, you need halves and hookers and other playmakers. Maybe Isaac Lee could be the one that opens him up. Don't know, yet to see. But um, just they got to use him right, I think. And then that's when I'll start to see, oh, maybe I did make the wrong prediction. But I think, you know, you stay with... With us or majority of us, I don't know where you're sitting, Paul. But to miss the eight is a dollar eighty-five. So not too you think, bad. Look, think back to the Cowboys, twenty fifteen, when they won, and Tal Malolo, the the sort of form he was in, just running over blokes for fun, like Fafita has been. But he had Morgan Thurston, yep. all of these big names around him supporting. It wasn't just him. Mm. So. Remember, towards the end of last season. Fafita was coming off the bench. He <laughs> he wasn't actually starting matches. So obviously the coach was trying trying to like you trying to figure out how best to use them to get the most out of him. Um, and it wouldn't surprise me to see him start a number of games off the bench again this season. Um, I just don't think there's enough class in the halves uh, and at hooker. 
for them to be a real, a true uh, top eight contender. So yeah, I've got them finishing eleventh. So I guess we're all sort Consensus of there. Like, we're, yeah, good. We're okay. Yeah. So then, obviously, everyone get on to make it at two dollars five. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There you go. He's learning. He knows. <laughs> Uh, right, where do we go? Just a just a little check yep. uh, on my part. That's my bracket nine to twelve full. <laughs> <laughs> Broncos, Dragons, Sharks, Titans, fill up. Uh, I could see mine changing when we do our final eight. <laughs> oh, I can too. But yep, uh, Knights was it? Yeah, we're we're heading to Newcastle. Uh, Newcastle Knights who finished in seventh place uh, last season. Let, uh, let me give you some stats. Yep, these are disgusting. I don't. If you look at these stats, they shouldn't have finished inside should, the top eight. They shouldn't have finished inside the top twelve. Points for four hundred twenty-eight against five hundred and seventy-one. <laughs> so they're one hundred and fifty points in, in debt. Yeah. Average points per game seventeen. Ooh. Average points conceded twenty-three. <laughs> they were losing six 0 every game, and they made the eight. Oh well, well. How's that possible? <laughs> Well, they obviously picked up. Uh, they, obviously they, got, they won a few close games um, and got smashed. Yeah. A, number, another, a number of others. Yeah, that's it's that's disgusting. what that says to me. Disgusting. Um, I guess a bit. The big thing for them is key players staying healthy. Um, the loss of Mitch Pierce. Have mm. they have they accounted for that? Um, it, Ponga obviously. Staying on the field for the majority of the season would be a big, big help for Newcastle. Um, once, he, as you just said, they've got a big, strong pack, just yep. like every other team. Um, but do they have enough class in other positions? The big one for me, I, I believe, was it Brayley, the hooker? Um, He's out for the first part yes. of the season, isn't he? Oh, is it just Achilles. the first part? I thought it was okay. for the year. Oh, I thought he's done as Achilles, so that's six to eight. Yeah. yeah. Like that's that I, I can't go past that, to be honest. Um that to me that's one of the biggest losses. I think he, as a captain, he was enormous last year. Um so, sort of tied up that middle. Um, I suppose they scored a lot of those twenty three points out wide, I'm guessing. <laughs> <laughs> back my 17, statement 17, up. 17 um, points. Yeah, yeah. Oh, the other, the, the opposition. Oh, the other, yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because I haven't seen Randall play. Obviously, there hasn't been um, too many NRL games from him. Um, and New South Wales Cup sort of hasn't been playing either. So now this kid's got to come in and just go straight in, play the role. I don't know their depth. I don't. I don't think it's there either. Like, yeah. I if for me, it's Ponga. If they're to do anything this year, it's Ponga. Um, well, they can't Cl score points when he's not on the field. They, exactly. they were so one-dimensional. And teams could could cover that. They could yep. set up their defence so they didn't have to worry about Ponga when he wasn't on the field. I, and, and I think Clifford's sort of come leap and, leaps and bounds since he've come, he's come to Newcastle. But I still I, – I'm hoping he gets better again this year. But uh, Clune supporting him, I don't know. I, I, I've – Okay, I'm going to say something outrageous. I think they they could fight the Tigers for last position. Wow. I'm with you. Um, I'm with you. Oh, so I, looked, I looked at the first eight rounds, and they they could possibly lose all eight games. If they lose to the Tigers in round two, I think they'll lose all eight games because they start Roosters, Tigers, Panthers, Sharks, Eagles, Dragons, Eels, Storm. Ooh. That's not that. That is nightmare. That's a, that's almost the top eight, right there. So, yeah, I mean, to miss the eight at a dollar sixty two is very juicy. And if you but like me and think they might fight for the wooden spoon, eleven dollars. And sounds research. That's, I agree. I think they're going to struggle. struggle this year. That's, these are this is my last team for that bottom bracket for me. Um. Yeah, I, I like you say Pong is the big one. I think. What do you think about Joey Johns? He's on the. He's officially on the coaching staff now. Yep. How much is he going to help? And uh, I don't think it's obviously not going to be enough. Yeah. Oh, he'll he'll make the players better. I believe that. And 
bring that Newcastle vibe back to them. I just think once you step on the field and you're va- uh, versing a Nathan Cleary, Jerome Luo combination in the halves, and you've got a pack and a back line that's just as good, or a Roosters team who we're about to look at, what what Joey can't do much on the field. Yeah, you know, so he he'll he'll make them better, and I believe their forward pack. Once again, we go to the forwards. We'll win a couple of those games for them. And so will Ponga. I think he'll be exceptional this year. I just don't think they have enough. Mm. I think as long, uh, along with Mitchell Pierce being out, Connor Watson is a huge loss. Oh, yeah. They relied a lot on him last year when... He was sort when, of Mr. Fix-It, wasn't he? He sort of... He when Ponga and Pierce were needed. playing. Yeah. So, big so, out. So, who do you have in the halves? You've got Clifford with... Clune. 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 Yeah. What about the young fella? Um, Crossland? Crossland. Sasangi? Um, no, I'm not too sure. I, I I didn't watch any of their game last night. So did he go okay last night, Paul? Not the worst. Not the worst. Yeah. I, do, I do like the he, – he had some good games uh, in the juniors. Um, but I'll just look at the spine again. Kalen Ponga, sure, very, very classy. But as you say – no Braley at nine, so Chris Randall, um, Clifford, and Clune. They just that doesn't fill me with a yeah. whole lot of confidence. It's a and, big step up for Clifford having to be the he was you know the secondary to Pierce last year. Now he's yeah. the guy. And we we spoke about this last week as well. When these teams are playing, as we've seen, they're starting eight rounds. When they're playing these experienced teams, do you want to just chuck a young fella to the wolves, or do you chuck someone? I, I suppose Clune hasn't been there for so many games, but he's been there and tasted it before. So do you chuck him there for a couple of rounds to try and steady it, maybe jag one or two wins, or do you just let the young fella go? And yeah, so that's something I, I think we'll wait to see. So you've got him in your sixteen to thirteen bracket. Yeah. And if I had to go deeper, probably 15 to 16. <laughs> Blake? Uh, I've got them I've got them 13th, 14th, but yeah. Yeah. I've got them 12th, but I can. I, I, I agree with you guys. Um, if Pong is not on the field for the majority of the season, yep. um, they are a, a fair dink and wooden spoon contender. Big time. So, yeah, as you say, they they lost quite a bit when, well, Blake Green, he was halfway out the door anyway. <laughs> uh, but with uh, Mitchell Pierce gone, uh, Connor Watson, they, they've lost a lot of sort of not just experience, but all in the same sort of position, all in the same area where um, they haven't really, in my opinion, filled the gaps. I think Dane Gargoy is a nice pickup in the centres and yeah. um, with Bradman Best there. Mm. Um, was it Stafford? No, Heimel Hunt and uh, Nari Tuala, yep. who uh, finished the season off very, very strongly. Mm. Um, they do have a back line that could, uh, well, outside of the halves, they have a back line that I think could really light the competition up. But will they will they be set up by that halves period? And I just, I don't know, it's a big, big question mark for mine. We now go to Parramatta Seals. The Parramatta Eels. Uh, you got some stats for us on the Eels? 566 points for, 457 against. Uh, scored on average 23 points a game and gave up 18 points a game. So this is the first team. We're into, what, sixth place? This is the first team to be scoring more points than they're giving away. To have a positive yeah. for and against. Yeah. That's uh, that's quite remarkable, you think? Cream rises to the top. Mm. Rich get richer. Oh, what are we thinking? Mate, I'm, I'm all in on the Eels. I'm very excited. I'm very excited. Um, it excites me because, like personally, as a player, I've sort of been in this position before where you've – and it hadn't worked out for me, obviously. We spoke about that. And, Carl, you always bring it up every chance you get. Um, the Warriors beat me that second year. But, you know, you come back and you've been in the, the semis and next year you go a step further and then you go a step further. And I think for us, we didn't know when our last year was. 
we still thought we had another year and then they took players away. But these guys know that after this, there's no Isaiah Papali'i, there's no Reed Mahoney, uh, Reed Money, there's no oh, who are, there, there'd be other players as well that are leaving. Edison. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, Marata Niakore going to the Warriors. So, like, they know this is, I think, the last time where this forward pack, this bunch might get this shot at it. Um, so that's why I'm excited. I think they're, if uh, Reed Marnie stays healthy, I think this team could go a long, long way. And, and they've, they've gained Mitch Rain as a backup, pretty handy backup. Yep. So I think even if, if Marnie goes out injured, they can still go a long, long way. Looking at the first, uh, first eight rounds, they've got a very soft start to the year. Uh, Titans, Sharks, Storm, probably the big question. Dragons, Titans again, Tigers, Knights, Cowboys. Mm. It's all the first eight. So there could be eight no, seven and one. Then they've got a tough stretch. Panthers, Roosters, Seagulls, Raiders before a bye. They should be on the positive side of the ledger by the time they get to the bye. You would hope. You would think so. Yep. Um, and in a pretty good spot, I would say. Yeah. Um, yeah, they've got a pretty good team. Yeah, I agree with Blake. It's uh, pretty much last chance saloon for this the the current makeup of this Parramatta Eels side to win a comp. Um, and I've got them in the top eight again, but I don't have them improving too much. Uh, I, just, I just think the year was last year. I, I do like uh, some of the pickups they've got. I mean, Mike Acevo was fairly average last year. I mean, he burst out of the gates. Uh, the season before, and he was pretty much unstoppable. He just sort of like shaking. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't want to be tackling him myself. I'm just saying, he just, he just, Sorry, he wasn't up to the high standards that he was uh, the season before. I think Simonson's a good pickup for them, um, especially after the injury to, um, to Dunster. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that tackle just, it just looked ugly from. From the out, and what's he done? He's done his ACL, his MCL. He's done. He's yeah. done a lot. Um, okay. So he's so. Hopefully, he'll be able to bounce back. But they're a wee bit light now in those outside backs. Um, and so, if anyone falls over, um, mm-hmm. you know they're going to have to find someone to jump up and, and do something. Uh, once again, as you say, another big strong forward pack, um, and the spine. Um, of the three teams we've looked at so far, it was by far and away the best with a Gutherson, Brown, Moses, and Marnie. Um, yep. that, that is a spine that can get you to the grand final. I just don't think they will. Um, I just don't think they will. I think a, a number of these players are sort of just getting to the sort of right at the top of their career and maybe jump it, falling down the other side. Um, yep. So I, I do have them in the top eight, but I've only... Just got them in there. I've got them uh, at, in seventh. Just breaking news. Uh, Fui, Ma- Fui Maano, five matches for that tackle. Yeah. Yep. They really um, put them down on it, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I tend to agree, Paul. I've got them in uh, fifth to eighth. Same sort of spot yeah. as last year. Just must be um, me out in the limb. Oh, here we yeah. go. What are they to make top four? Uh, couldn't tell you. I've just got to reach the GF seven dollars. And if they if they're to reach it, you might as well. And you think like me, the chance to reach it at seven dollars. Well, hey, might as well put some money on them to win the grand final. Eleven dollars. Eleven dollars. And if you're gonna do that, you might as well take the top four too. Go on. At top four. Three fifty. Oh, we'll be into two fifty after Blake gets a bit on. Hey, man. <laughs> the only thing that worries me is what Paul just discussed because Sivo won't start the year and Dunstan's mm. just been injured. So I think they'll have Russell on one wing, Simonson on the other. Uh, Wanga Blake in the centres, but the other kid, Pinacini. Man, now, he, got a he is good. I, I do like the look of him. Yeah. yeah, he's powerful. So I think, yeah. Uh, you said that soft start. Hopefully, two or maybe two games before that tough run, they get Sevo back. They're flying. The confidence is high. Now jag a couple of those wins. 
What about uh, interested to hear your thoughts on uh, Isaiah Papali and how his final season, how he will go. He on. You know, he he's obviously played a couple of years in the NRL before last year, but last year was his breakout year. He was dominant. Yep. Um, can he back that up? Yeah, I don't see why not. I, I don't. I'm not a big believer in the whole second year syndrome thing. I, I think if it happens, it's just you know mental. Or pe- people can figure you out, but he's been in the NRLs for years before that. So um, I think he's taken his game to another level, as we saw. And they had no answers for him. You have 26 rounds in NRL to ha- and you play teams twice. So you get a look. You can see it on video five weeks before it happens. You, you know, So it's not like the old days where you just play and then you don't see them. Or you, if you miss their game on TV, you don't, you don't know how they play. These days, a lot more advanced. So, I, you know, I can't see him not having a good year. The question for me is, where do you put him? Well, they put him in the back row of Madison. Sean Lane played good on the weekend. But, or do you, but, you know, Nathan Brown will be lock. Or do you bring... He played a bit of prop last year too, didn't he? Ah, uh, yeah, he did. Exactly. Yeah. Like, so... I think his uh, best is in the second row, though. Yeah, I think so too. So do I. So From do I. Edge. Yeah. But you're, oh, I guess with Madison, I mean, he had a number of head issues, mm. uh, HIAs last season. It would only take one more knock and then the sort of decisions taken out of the coach's hands and it just becomes, right, we've got Papa Lee in lane. Yep. Um, but at the moment, it's sort of like a th- three going into two. Which one do you leave out? And, and I think Papa Lee is the first one you pick when it comes to the second row. Yeah, And then you decide between lane and Madison. Whereas at the start of last season, Papa Lee he may not have even been the third <laughs> selection in the uh, in the second row. So he's come leaps and bounds. Fantastic, G- great move for him from the Warriors. Yeah, it's disappointing as a Warriors fan because you we got to see, you know, see this <laughs> when he was playing for the Warriors. Look at Marty's <laughs> smile. Oh, we got to see this when he was playing for the Warriors, but. He's probably a byproduct of being in a shit team at the time. Thanks, a team not a team not. <laughs> <laughs> I was just rephrasing a team, a team not contending. <laughs> I was playing. I was playing reserve grade then. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> much better team. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. A team not contending when you you get put into a, a team like the Eels, who are you know been in the finals the last three or four years, and he's able, we're able to see that. On show, I don't know. Do you do you find yourself elevated like that? Yeah, I, th- I think when yeah. you're around uh, great players, you you you're elevated. You see people. You know, we've had a laugh about the Queensland side. All those, you know, about that yeah. Queensland side that you know had they still had Munster and players like that that played and they won it, didn't they? So when you're around greatness, you sort of uh, go to another level and learn a bit. So that could be one of the reasons why he went so high when he went to the Eels. Right. Uh, did we did we say? I said seventh. Yeah, I've got fifth to eighth. Oh, we just we just want to know. Did we say? Did Blake say second? I said yeah, second or fourth. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> but seven dollars to reach a GF. That's all you need to know. Wow, we love it. Right, the final team that we'll be looking at today, the team that finished fifth last season, the Sydney Roosters. Much better statistically, 630 points for, 489 against. Uh, They scored on average 25 points a game, but they conceded 21. So, still on the positives. I, uh, well, I guess last season, if you look at the Roosters team, uh, their season was curtailed by injuries in key positions. Um, so for them to finish in uh, fifth, I think was a huge uh, plus for the club. They, um, I think they outperformed um, with the sort of troops they had on the ground. Although to be fair, they do have quite a bit of depth there uh, at Bondi. So and Blake, a lot of cash, and yeah, you got a wee bit of cash. <laughs> yeah. Blake, you where do you see the Roosters this season? How do you see them going? On paper, they're winning the comp by uh, easy. Yeah, 
I, I can't see anyone beating them. It's hard enough for a team to go back to back in the competition these days oh, in any sort of era. Um, you know, for Panthers, I don't think I think it might be a bit too tough. For the Roosters, those young kids that got to play last year are just going to get oh, you know, they're going to be up ready to go. All these players come back a year of experience. Um, I mean, I'm looking at their back line: Tedesco, Tupo, Suwali on a wing. Joseph Manu, one centre. The question's who do you use at the other centre? Well, last year, you know, you had back rowers playing in the centres. This year, you've got Billy Smith coming back from injury. You've got Momorowski, who's been screaming out for just a chance to play consistent first grade. And had, every time he's put his hand up, he's been exceptional. And uh, a friend of mine, good old Kevin Agama's back from England. Mm. Off three titles. Three grand final wins. We talk about being around greatness. This three grand final. It might be Super League, but you're winning. You're winning culture. So I think that back line alone speaks for itself. I, th- I think they win the comp quite easily. Chucking uh, Adam Kieran in there too, who was a, a half-playing centre and probably get a start in uh, any team as centre yep. after the, the way he finished. Um, yeah, I've, I tend to agree, Blake. I've got the the Roosters finishing higher than they did last year. Um, and, and I'll just, as you say on paper, you cannot argue that they look like the team to beat, um, definitely. Sam Verrill's out for the opening game, but, you know, what's one game? I heard Luke Carey was in a moon boot uh, a week or two back. Yeah, yeah. and he uh, said that he might be back round one, I think, possibly. But look, look, we just spoke about Verrill's out the first round. We just spoke about how big of a loss Connor Watson was tonight. How big of a pickup is he for the Roosters? Oh, yeah. Yep. Like that's massive. Um, they're they're sort of the weakest in that hooker position when you think about it. Verrills, Marshkey, but he got to play a lot last year, Marshkey, and now you got Watson. And to think that someone like Takeaho might not even start, might be on your bench. Mm. That's another good four, but I can't. I just can't see anyone beating them. They've got just looking at the first two games, reasonably tough. Uh, oh, sorry, not the first two games. They play the Knights first. Uh, Seagulls, Bunnies, then Cowboys, Broncos, Warriors, Dragons, Dogs, Titans, Eels into the 10th round. So reasonably easy start, you would say. Um, and I think, yeah. that, I think that 10th round to 16 is their tough one. They play the Panthers twice, the Eels twice. They got the Storm, Sharks and Raiders. I think that's going to... That might where it might be through Origin as well, possibly. Mm-hmm. So yep. I think a lot they might drop some games there. Like I don't expect them to go through undefeated, obviously. But um, yeah, their home run they could go undefeated in their home run when you look who they're playing. Um, they got the Storm and the Eagles, or oh, the grudge match at the end, the last round. But apart from that, I can yeah. I agree. I. I love the look of their spine, and as you, it's almost like they foresaw Verils might be out for a game or two at the beginning of the season. So we need to pick someone up. They pick Connor Watson up. We've got a little stopgap there. Um, and I think last season, did they have one? Did Radley play at hook nine. or yep. a nine at some stage? Just a just a fill in sort of thing. Yeah. Um, we know Joey Manu can play at the back if Tedesco goes down. Um, Watson can play in the halves as well. I guess the question is, who are they going to pair with Kerry in the halves? Is it going to be the young Sam Walker or um, Hutchison did a, a very good job for them last year? I like the young fellow Walker, but I w- if they had Hutchison in there, wouldn't b- wouldn't bother me at all. Um, they got the Butcher brothers. They they've just got right here. It's just ridiculous the amount of. Um, cover they've got and really really good it's just you take one piece out you put another piece in and it's like you've lost nothing well speaking of losses we haven't even talked about who they have lost and probably because most of them were out for most of the year anyway last year but jake friend boyd corden and brett morris josh morris isaac liu and matty cavallo who who got quite a lot of starts it's what, what scored four or five tries in one game yeah yeah that's Sell, a lot selling of selling shoes the week before a lot of rugby league there. Wow. Great story. I'll tell you what. I've I've written down every everything for you. 
Well, you want win the grand final six dollars fifty. If you want to make the grand final, it's three forty. <laughs> make the top four is absolute steal at a dollar seventy five, <laughs> and the minor premiership is five dollars fifty. I mean, beyond everything, you're you're bound to win at least two of the four. Easy. Could get all four. You're not allowed to guarantee things here. <laughs> I'm, get, I'm, I'm, guess, I'm guessing that Blake's got them in the bracket of one to one. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> mate, and they're one, and then there's two. So there's, big, uh, gap. big gap. Big gap. Carl? Yeah, I've got them one to four. Um, yep, I'll wait uh, until next week when we have to have our ladder before <laughs> I supply that, but they'll be one to four for me. Yep, I have got them finishing in first place. Oh. Um, and I'm just telling you, they are five fifty to win the minor premiership. Five fifty, yeah. and I do like the look of that. I just that they actually they've recruited well. I know they lose a hell of a lot of experience with Cordner, a friend, uh, the two Morris brothers um, going, but they've they've got a system where. They bring players through bit by bit. So they surround younger and experienced players with a whole lot of players that are experienced. And so they gradually do that until that younger player gets a whole lot of more experience and they introduce another one, bring him in and make sure that he's surrounded by a whole lot of experience. So the, the system they have there means that you don't throw, you know, seven or well, three or four young players in all at once and then they get absolutely smashed and their confidence is gone for, if not the whole season, half the season. And you've just, they've taken two or three steps back and it's, it's just going to take them a wee bit longer to get back up to speed again. Where these guys just bring them through, surround them with really good, experienced players and they just, they do the job right. They do the job very, very well. So, yeah, I've got them finishing in first and I do like them for the minor premiership at 5.50. Nice. If you're, uh, if, if anyone's listening out there and they don't like the Roosters, uh, you can get $5 to miss the eight. <laughs> I think you're throwing your money away, yeah, but, but just say hey, we've, we've got to tell both sides of the story. Well, here. Oh, yeah, we don't want to go, we don't, don't want to say bet on this without letting you know what else you can bet on. Exactly. The other side. Exactly. No, fair enough. I wouldn't, but people do bet with their heart, don't they? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Especially when it comes to NRL, mm. especially when it comes to the Warriors. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. What did I say? You said 13. 13. That's right. Tell you what, that top eight would have been juicy before the weekend. She should be coming in now. You know, that top four. Three, 325 now. 325. It has come in. Yeah. Did you tell her you made Was Did we get a whole lot of money from Papa Moore on the Warriors to we make did. the top eight? Didn't we? we did last week. It was that. The Raiders, the Sharks. I think I talked them into everything last week. Oh, you right. did. Not the Sharks. <laughs> Not the Sharks. Not the Sharks. Oh, no. right. yeah. I think we've covered the four, uh, the four teams that we wanted to this week. So next yep. week we'll be looking at the teams that finished in the top four last season. Um, before we go, though, uh, we have a – we've done it for the last – well, quite a few years now, the NRL Fantasy League. And this year Blake is joining our league. <laughs> and so once the season starts, I will make sure that we have a, a review – of exactly how Blake's done in that fantasy league. Yeah. I'm sure uh, that's exactly what our listeners want. They, they <laughs> want to know exactly how Blake has done week by week in the fantasy league. How did you uh, go last year, Paul? Can you remember? Anyway, well, it's all about Blake at the moment. <laughs> yeah. so we'll focus on that. Uh, I think we're doing our draft uh, in a couple of days' time. Yeah. Um, so we'll just we'll see. The, the boys are scrambling. I can tell you that much. What sort of team that Blake comes up with. It's uh, a draft, isn't it? It There's is. a draft. Oh, yep. yeah, different, very different. Got to get the, the cap on, the GM cap. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I like it. All right, Gus. <laughs> <laughs> it's all about the junior system. Uh, that's it for another week here on the Advantage Line. But don't forget, we'll be back next week with a preview. Number four, the top four teams from last season, and then it's all go. Do we do we need to have our, uh, our ladders next week? Yeah, what, the... Uh, Official, our official. Oh, you mean without the brackets? Yeah. Hell, well, I will. Okay. Yeah. Well, oh, well, I will. Blake, 
I'll get yeah, it. Yeah. All right, I'm just checking. Yep. Just checking. Good. We will have those ladders for you next week about it, where the teams will finish. And then you can just point out the one that's most value to finish in the top eight from the top eight that you've created. I like that. Yep. Beautiful. Yeah. That's it. We're going to go. We're done for another week, but we'll be back again next week with another version, episode, on the Advantage Line. <laughs>